Hi, I'm Nicholas Seminario, founder of Dark Angel Company. This podcast is to share the untold stories of just a few of the many people battling mental illnesses in this world. If you're in need of a little inspiration to keep fighting or to feel less alone in your battle, keep listening and share to spread awareness. This is the Dark Angel Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Dark Angel Podcast. It's me and Max again. Today we're going to be bringing another great topic to you guys. Lately I've had a lot of really good feedback on everything and so far you guys have liked the newer episodes and the newer kind of swing of things that we've been doing. As you guys could see, uh, Max's wrist is better now. Uh, For the most part, we're getting there. And yeah, everything's been good with me. I've just been trying to push through everything and seriously keep continuing with what I'm doing and trying bettering myself uh, every day, Uh, just a little bit at a time. And then, you know, over time it gets to something huge. I just want to thank you guys again for all your support and love. Uh, Keep sharing, subscribing, liking, and all that good stuff. Today's episode, we're going to be doing the benefits and the negatives of social media and how that affects your mental health. I think this is a really, really important topic, especially for those in our generation, right? Our, Our lives kind of heavily revolve around social media. And this is something that's hard to deal with and hard to get around. It's always in our face, right? There's no kind of avoiding it. And if you are avoiding it, it's something that's tough to avoid and you, you kind of feel like you're left out in a sense. What's your thought on social media? What's your stance? Personally, I'm not on it much. I think it's cool. It's fun to connect with your friends and share stuff, you know, with your friends, talk on social media and all that. But I've noticed that when I spend too much time on it, I don't feel great, you know, and I kind of feel like I'm in a daze. Okay. And it's almost like a whole nother world. Yeah, you know? definitely. And it's like... We, you know, myself included, we've become so obsessed with it and so involved in it, you know, which I give you credit for not being always on it. It's seriously like a part of our lives. So how was it for you to step away from social media and wean yourself off of it? It's hard. I mean, especially because there was there's some days or like points in the past where I've spent like a couple weeks just or not weeks, but like days in a row, just scrolling through social media and not really doing anything. And eventually you just kind of get to a point where you don't really know what you're even doing anymore, you know? Um, And I didn't like that feeling. So I just deleted it for a couple days. Um, And then over time, you know, you re-download it again, stuff like that. You just can't let it become your main focus. And when it does for me, that's when I delete it again. Okay. It's just... It's something you can't avoid, you know, in today's world, but it's something you don't want to get too much of, in my opinion. Yeah. And, you know, another thing, um, before I kind of get into my experience, there's a study that states more than 6,500 12 to 15 year olds use social media at least three times a day. And this is directly linked to negatively impacting your mental health. Would you say this has negatively impacted your mental health in any way? yeah not not in like a like a social aspect you probably not for you a social aspect right like in what in what sense do you like friendships and you know and those aspects are going out and seeing people out like has it negatively affected you in that aspect or is it more times yeah you get like a little bit of fomo sometimes yeah that can definitely happen there's also like you can you end up comparing yourself to everything you see you know on social media, whether you intend to or not. Yeah. And that's the part to me that's like the most detrimental because it ruins your confidence. Yes. You know? Yep. And when you don't have confidence, everything else you do becomes kind of less enjoyable. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and look, like I've also said in the past, there are positive aspects to social media. You know, it gives us a platform. There's people who are able to push their messages and able to speak to people there's definitely a lot of downside to it. And, you know, I wasn't really someone who cared so much about what people were doing, but nobody wants to see everybody's friends doing something and then say, you're not invited to it. Like nobody likes that feeling. And of course that's going to make you feel much worse about yourself than you should. Um, And that's something that's so hard and, uncomfortable to deal with, right? That's not something our parents really had to deal with, right? 
if they weren't invited somewhere, most likely they didn't know about it. Everything's now shared everywhere. So it's like you really have no way of avoiding what's going on. And if it's happening, you're going to know. Yeah. And like another thing, too, about about social media is I feel like it takes away any sense of privacy that we might have had. Yeah. You know, because everyone is so quick to post their life on social media that what's really left for you you yeah. know what I mean? Like, what's yours that you get to keep to yourself? Yeah, exactly. You know? And that's important. You have to have your own things. Yes, definitely. And that's that's another thing. I'm someone who likes that, I guess you would say, privacy, you know, right? And it's like, it's so weird to even have to think about, but our lives aren't private Not for all. the most part. You know, I like to keep my life relatively private. It's kind of hard, you know, with doing this. I have to be open and I have to share. I was never someone who I felt overshared on social media. It bothered me. And the only reason is, is because, like you said, you don't have that intimacy with that your, your life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're all, you, I'm not that intimate with that many people. You know, like, to me, I'll text those people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing. It's like you kind of lose that sense of, you know, relevancy with... The intimacy. Yeah, exactly. The, like the ability to make the connection almost yes, with yes, the people. Yes, exactly. Another thing. I would say most of us is probably scroll right when we wake up, right? That's our first thing, right? We grab our phone. When we wake up, we scroll on TikTok or Instagram, and it's hard to get off, right? Would you say you're someone who scrolls, and or now you don't do it as much? No, I ha- honestly, I I really don't like looking at my phone after I wake up. Okay. I, I get a headache when I do, but I have in the past, and like you get stuck in bed. Yeah. You know, and like I my problem is before bed, I'll scroll through for a couple minutes, and then it's impossible to go to sleep after. Yeah, and that's that's another thing. You know, in my opinion, I feel like it fries your brain. Right? It's something that you're just like a zombie. You're staring at your screen for hours. You're living in a fake a fake world that yes. you don't really like have your own thoughts. It yeah. It's like, and, and now how do you think about that stuff? I mean, obviously we're out of high school and I think it's a lot more prominent in high school, not necessarily scrolling. I mean, in the aspect of like socialization, like people are really judgmental and they heavily judge based off of what you're posting, who you're posting with, where you are, what you're doing. Like people are just judging your life. That's, and there's no, balance between yeah hey i'm going on vacation and oh i need everybody to see that i'm going on vacation and that i look good while i'm doing it yeah yeah exactly and it's it's kind of this false sense of reality right achievement too yes yeah get into that because i I want you to kind of explain your thought behind that i just think like it comes down i guess like likes to a person right like a lot of people when they post something they go back and they're like oh well it only got this many likes or it only got this many likes and that's not, to me, that's not like the idea of social media. You know, the idea is you're sharing your life, right? But it's not for other people to approve of it, you know? Yeah. And like, that's not how your achievement should be made. And when you judge everything based off of social media, you then create these unrealistic standards and expectations for yourself because social media is a highlight reel, you know? Yeah. And it might might not just be a highlight reel, but... At the end of the day, it's only what they want you to see, you know? Yeah, 100%. So, you know, I don't think enough people keep that in mind, and that's where the negative effects of social media can come in. Okay, yeah. I was someone who was super obsessed with likes, right? I got social media in October of eighth grade. I got Instagram. Um, My mom was, like, super against it. She was like, no, there's no reason for you to... Be on it, you know, there's no positive things about it, especially for an eighth grader. What do you need to be doing on it? And all my friends had it, of course. You know, I was like one of the only kids who didn't have it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and it, it, it was like, that was another thing, right? So it's like, which we'll get into that after. That's that's a whole nother thing that's hard for kids. I wasn't able to have it. I finally, I was begging, begging, begging. My mom finally, you know, she was like, you know what? You're mature. You're a good kid. Whatever. We'll let you get it. Um and that was all I could think about. Oh, I'm I'm getting this many likes. You know, my friends are only getting this many likes. I'm getting more likes than this person. This person's getting more likes than me. 
And that's what I was basing everything off of, right? So it's like, we look at this and then, you know, I had people saying, oh, how are you getting so many likes? And I'm not getting, and then I'm like, you know, looking back at it now, I'm like, so dumb. Like, why do we care about that? Right. But we did. And it didn't get better from there. You know, now I don't care. I don't really even post on social media. Obviously, I post on, you know, this account for Dark Angel, but my personal social media, I don't think I've posted in three or four years. Yeah, same here. So it's like, but over those three years, I guess I would say, of from when I got it to when I stopped posting, really, that's all I really cared about. And I was like, oh, yeah, go like it, go like it. And, you know, I'm somebody who likes to obsess over things. And that was something I obsessed over. So I was like, you know, I'd post something and I would tell my family, oh, yeah, go like it, go like it. Like, and they're like, what's wrong with you? Like, wh- why do you care? And and then after a while, I was like, wait, they're right. Like, what does it matter? You know, and that was something kind of eye opening because it was super consuming, you know, not just in the aspect of me scrolling, but me constantly refreshing. Oh, how many likes am I getting? How many likes am I getting? Does that mean I'm likable? Does that mean people care about me? Does that mean people think I'm a great person? Which, no, that's not the case at all. You know, and it took... If I like something half the time, I don't even realize I'm doing it yeah, at this point. Exa- and I'm the same way. I just like things and that's it. You know, I scroll, I do the morning scroll and I like, 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 whatever. I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> um, but that that was something now I look back at and I'm like, I was seriously so wrapped up in it. And it has such a stronghold over us, I feel like, as a generation and even as a world, right? We have people in their 70s 80s 90s who were mindlessly scrolling on social media yeah so like you know it's so important to kind of limit your times on it and make sure you're doing the right things on it because it does follow you everywhere yeah and like there's another part of it too which goes into which is dopamine yeah like i don't know how much you know about like dopamine and like how social media affects dopamine but in your brain you only have a fixed amount right and it takes a while to renew so when you waste it on social media you know you're not making any progress with whatever you have to do you know whether it be working on yourself that day going to work going to school hanging out with your friends like it takes away from the enjoyment of that Okay. because earned dopamine feels better than cheap dopamine right through like the effort so that's where a little bit of like that mental, the negative mental side effect comes in as well. Because now all of your pleasure came th- from scrolling through everyone else's life, not yours. Interesting. And I didn't, you know, I've heard stuff similar to that, but I didn't know about it in depth. And it makes complete sense, right? We're getting these signals sent to our brain that are just saying, oh, like, 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 and it's this constant light bulb just going off in your head. And then, like you said, now when you go into the real world, things seem super different, right? And like, you're, it's almost like a brain fog, okay. you know, because like dopamine helps you focus on things to essentially like get the task done, right? Interesting. It's a, it's not what motivates you, but it can keep you focused on something, right? Yeah. And if you waste it, you know, that's why sitting down and doing homework for a long time is difficult. You know, sitting down for too long of a period of time after staring at a TV even, or, you know, social media, like, makes it difficult to focus. Yeah, interesting. And, you know, I'm also someone, you know, and I don't know if you're the same, but sometimes if I'm doing nothing, you know, I'm just checking my phone just because I need that, you know, oh, whoa, you know, it's like, yeah, just that stimulation. Yeah. Which that's something I'm also trying to kind of get away from. I've lowered my time in the mornings. Same thing at night. I don't really go on my phone at night. I'll watch YouTube. I throw YouTube on, but I try to kind of stay off my social media at night. I do whatever, my scrolling in the morning. But at night, I make sure I'm off of it and I kind of have that time to watch YouTube, whatever it is. How would you feel about this false reality that is created around social media and how would you say it affects your mental health or others mental health in general for myself not so much anymore you know because i've been able to kind of separate the two and like notice when i feel a certain way because of it you know yeah but i've definitely had like nights where i've been put in a bad mood because of i guess the way something i saw made me feel and i didn't realize it you know 
and then I'm in a bad mood for the whole night. And, you know, that leads into the next day. I think there's still positive aspects to social media. Yeah. Personally, like I've been, I've connected with a couple friends who I haven't seen in four or five years through like Instagram and stuff. So that, that's that been cool. But for others, uh, I don't know. I mean, I know that there's a lot of negatives that go with it, you know, with like beauty standards and everything so perfect on social media and you know, you, it has to look a certain specific way for people, you know, for people you don't know. Um, and I think that's super negative for others. But keeping in touch with friends and family that you might not be able to see anymore, you know, I'm sure that has a positive uplifting effect on other people as well. Yeah, and I definitely think that's a positive side to social media, right? That connection with your family, your friends. And that's that was the intended purpose, right? It was to connect people, but obviously it got to a different level and now it's flooded with advertisements. Like you said, these beauty standards where people are constantly... Everything's photoshopped. Exactly, and they're constantly comparing themselves. Why don't I look like this person? And that does have a huge effect on people's neg- negative mental health. You know, has that ever affected you? You know, have you ever looked at someone and been like, damn, like I should be going to the gym, you know, like had these kind of questions to yourself saying like what am i doing why can't i look like that yeah yeah i mean i feel like uh, what about you i I feel like we all have yeah totally you know totally and it makes you feel shitty about yourself you know you're like yes but i in certain areas like i sometimes like i'll appreciate that little kick in the butt you know what i mean like with the gym and stuff sure it's nice but it's still like it doesn't feel good. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it takes time to build that confidence back up. Yes, and I feel like now I don't really care. But I I clearly remember in high school being like, oh, I I why don't I look like that? You know, I got to go to the gym, and it was like, yeah, it's just not realistic. You know, guys are taking steroids, whatever it is, and it's like <laughs> these guys are ginormous, and you're like, oh, why why am I not that big, or why can't I look like that? And it's just. Like you said, it's photoshopped. It's these false realities where you're believing that you should look a certain way and you should be a certain way, but that's just not the real world, right? Everybody's going to look different. Everybody's going to have their own beauty in their own way. And people don't realize that, right? People think, oh, this is the only person that looks great. I have to look like this, you know? And somebody said this to me once. Those people are probably saying the exact same thing. I wish I looked like this person, you know? And that's something that we as a, a world, I feel like, struggle with. We're constantly comparing ourselves to others and, you know, thinking about the things we don't have compared to the things that we do have. And I think we should stress those things that we do have and really, you know, put a lot of emphasis on that stuff compared to putting emphasis on the stuff that we don't have. Have you ever had any situations where you saw stuff you were missing out on and how did that make you feel with, you know, social media? I mean, I'm sure there were nights that, like, I saw people out and, like, I had FOMO, you know? Especially if, like, I had turned down or, like, I wasn't able to go. But, it, like, particular instances now, what about you? See, I'm I'm very similar. Like, I don't really ever get FOMO, so I want you to kind of get into that. I'm someone who prefers to be alone, and I think that's a little bit because of my social anxiety. So, I really don't care if people are out and I wasn't invited, like... In a sense, like in a twisted way, I'd almost prefer to not be. You know, I'm like, all right, perfect. I don't have to say no, I can't come. Um, Whether that's just how I've convinced myself or whatever it is, I personally don't care because I feel like the people I surround myself with, they wouldn't really do that to me. So I'm not really, you know, worried about it. Oh, so you're saying like they, your friends ditched you kind of, is that what you're asking? Like your friends yes. ditched you? Yeah, that's what no, I'm asking. No, no, nothing okay. like that. More just like I wasn't able to go, okay. you know, yeah. like I wanted to go and okay. I couldn't. But like nothing, nothing like that where yeah. like friends went out and like told me they weren't and then they still went, you know? Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I've had like people talk to me about that, you know, they're like, oh, I, I was, I wasn't invited, you know, all my friends are here, whether it's my cousins, family members, you know, like who will tell me about this stuff and you know, it's like, it's such a tricky thing, you know, because I'm someone, like I said, who doesn't really give that much energy towards that stuff. I don't really, it doesn't really affect me. But, you know, there's people, like you said, who do have FOMO and 
that's hurtful, right? It's nobody wants to be disinvited or not invited to something. You know, you don't feel like you're loved yeah. and that's just a normal feeling. So how would you go about, you know, talking to someone who's experienced that? You know, what would you say to that person? I mean, it's difficult. Totally. Because I don't think there's really something to say that, that'll, like, fix the situation. Yeah. It has to come from them more than anything. Make sure that their head is focused on themselves. You know, like, don't focus. It goes back to what you said, like, not focusing on what you don't have, you know? In those moments, focus on yourself and don't let those people ruin, you know, your, I guess, your... Your fun. Yeah, your, your fun, your in your space, you yeah. know, your head space, all that stuff. Yeah. Don't let them ruin it because they didn't want to invite you somewhere, you know? And if you are you don't want to be friends with them anymore, if you want to try and make it work, just don't get attached to an outcome, you know? It'll, it's the easiest way to kind of, I guess, keep like a level head. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. And I would even say like, you know, don't ditch your friends, but kind of find people who aren't going to do that to you. You know, find people who do care about you and yeah. aren't just, you know, for whatever reason, oh, it's not convenient to invite you, whatever it is, you know, find those people that are going to kind of not do that, you know, yeah. as simple as that. And like, you can even look at it in a positive way. Like, you know, they did this to me. Now I don't, now I know where we stand. Yes. You know what I mean? I can go find people who actually want to spend time. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. I don't know if you've ever seen a Bronx tale. Um, no, but no. I heard it's a good one. It's a great movie. Um, and you know, why I'm getting into this, it's kind of along the lines of that. Like you said, they're doing you a favor. One of these, I've the, seen that scene. Yeah. yeah the main character yeah. gives, you know, somebody yeah. 20 bucks and the gangster goes, you know, what are you doing? He's like, why are you hustling this kid? Whatever. Why are you hounding him? And he goes, you know, I gave him 20 bucks. And the gangster goes, well, look for 20 bucks. Now the kid's out of your life. You never have to deal with him again. You know? So it's like, he's doing you a favor, right? Your friends are doing you a favor. If they don't want to invite you, they're showing you their true colors. They're not really your friends, right? So take that as a lesson. And, you know, look, if you're going to go back and you're, you're worried it's going to happen again, it most likely will. So, you know, then at that point, you're kind of doing it to yourself. Well, that's not having self-respect. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you have to respect yourself. You know, put yourself above that. And you will find new people that you can surround yourself with. How was it for you to delete social media? Because I think I would have a hard time with that. I don't post a lot, like I said, but I do like mindlessly scrolling. And I do kind of, you know, I think my day would be a little weird without it. Not that that's a good thing, but, you know, yeah. how would no, you... It's definitely really weird. Like, yeah, all those little moments that, like, you filled with your phone before are now just kind of... Like, you feel awkward sometimes because you don't have your phone. You don't, you don't have that thing to go to to distract you from the moment. And it's hard for the first couple weeks, but it feels awesome afterwards because your your like your mind is just completely focused on your life. You know what I mean? Like you're not thinking about something you saw this morning or the anxiety of you know something else you saw, and it's a great feeling. Yeah. So you know, I'm gonna kind of give those of you some advice um, for those of you who don't want to delete it. You know, for those of you who do want to kind of delete it and this is your, you know, your sign whether to delete it or not, go for it. I think it would be awesome. But for those of you who just can't pull the trigger and you can't kind of go through with it, here's what I would suggest to you. If you see a post that makes you feel uncomfortable or upset and this repeatedly happens, just don't follow those people. You know, try and make social media a happy and a healthy place for you compared to a negative place where you're constantly comparing and getting upset. I, I would seriously just suggest unfollowing them. I feel like that is something that can avoid that, that anxiousness and that nervousness. That's, that's my suggestion. What would you suggest, you know, for somebody? There was a couple of things I did. One of them, or at least this, this isn't something I did. But a friend of mine, he only follows people who he's close with. Okay. Um, and he said it's been great because now when he goes on there, he sees people whose opinion he values, you know, people who care about him in return. And like that anxiety isn't there anymore. And then personally, like when I was, I had trouble deleting it and not going on it. I would set like screen time limits for myself. That's smart. And like you can bypass them yourself, obviously. It gives you the cue to like, okay, if it 
went on today noon tomorrow let's make it to four o'clock before it goes on yeah you know and then okay eight o'clock and now let's go the whole day without getting to the limit okay you know and then over time you start to become less dependent on it and then it's a lot easier to either not pay attention to even if you do have it or just straight up delete it okay yeah and fomo i kind of wanted you to get into that uh, i'm not someone who experiences fomo i know my sister does I don't experience it. So where what's a situation you've experienced FOMO? Doesn't have to be directly related with social media. Um even if it was, that would be even better. But, you know, what what was it like and kind of describe it to me that feeling. I mean, it's more I'd say it's like an anxious feeling, you know? I don't really necessarily have FOMO, more so as like just it, it shows itself in certain situations, okay. you know? Yeah. Um it's a regular emotion. You know, you don't want to be excluded from anything or like not involved, yeah. you know. Um, I, it's just, I guess it's a desire to like be somewhere that you're not in the moment, you know. But where do I, you think that fear kind of comes from, right? Like like I said, like... Not being confident, maybe. Okay. Like, okay. I think that's where a lot of it stems from. Like if you're, if you don't, you're not confident in yourself and in your relationships, and when that situation, you know those relationships suffer just like overall life kind of like the quality of life i feel like depletes a little bit i feel like i've only really ever experienced it through social media okay. you know or maybe like a friend asked me to do something and it was unable to that's all i can really yeah say I, about it i think that's a, a perfect job of explaining you know i didn't realize it stems from something different than just not wanting to miss and obviously that has to do with it, but it, it's like you said, it's a lot deeper than that. Um, and it's look, it's not generalized either. It's everything's different for everybody. And that's just how I've experienced. Okay, it. yeah, perfect. Now the next thing I want to get into is cyberbullying with social media. I think this is something obviously newer with technology, right? Cyberbullying obviously wasn't a thing fifty years ago, so. How does that make you feel? Have you ever been cyberbullied? No. And I've had mean things said to me through social media. But the thing with social media is it gives everyone who's too soft to say those things in person a platform. You know? And, like, I hate to say it, but, like, there's a lot of people on there that would not have the guts to come up to you in real life and say half the things that they say. You know? And I think that's one of the worst things about it, you know, because anyone can hide behind a screen and say something, you know, but when it comes down to it, 99% of the time, they're not walking up to your face and saying it. Yeah. So that's how I look at it. If they're not going to say it to me when they see me, you know, or say something, if they were to cross paths during the day, then I kind of just disregard it. Okay. But I, it's, it's difficult to yeah. do that, you know, because those comments can dig deep, yes, you know? Definitely. So that's kind of your out then you would say if you know this isn't said to your face kind of don't take it to heart yeah pretty much you know like every social media is a performance essentially right of who can put on you know the best picture or you know the best video best highlight reel best story you know get the most likes and all this stuff and it's great if that's your job you know and you get paid for it but if it's not your job, it's just, it takes away so much energy, you know, and that's just how I feel about it. Yeah, you may I, feel differently. No, I feel the same way. And I think, like you said, it is a platform for people to say whatever they want, good or bad. And it does happen to be bad sometimes. And that's the, the scary thing and the problem with social media and people... Like you said, they take advantage. They go further than they would in real life, face-to-face. -face. Like you said. If at all. Yeah, exactly. Most people shy away from human interaction nowadays, you know, like as a whole. And confrontation, I just... Most people wouldn't have the guts to say it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And if they and do, then then you deal with it. Yes, exactly. And And that's another thing you mentioned. I think social media has had a huge effect on human interaction. People don't know how to interact with each other anymore. It's a huge problem. Yeah. It's it's almost weird. Like, you know, I, I love talking to my parents about this stuff, my aunts, uncles, you know, somebody from the older generation where they've experienced this stuff. 
They didn't grow up with it, though. Yes, exactly. So they get to see both sides of things where they used to knock on each other's door and run and play until 8 o'clock. man. Yeah, and it's like we never had that to that extent, right? Yeah, like, no, yeah. It, I never built, I never went in my backyard and like built something for fun with my friends. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, me neither. And, you know, I see it also differently with my little sister. My little sister's 12. And all of the kids in her age group, they're all glued to their devices, whether it's their phones, Same iPads. Same with my brother and my sister. And it's like, you know, I feel like we kind of just missed that. We still had that childhood where it wasn't revolving around technology. Yeah, lucky for me, you know, not a, I didn't think this at the time, but now, you know, I didn't get a phone until I was like 14. Really? Yeah. And I loved every second of everything up yeah. until that point, you know? Yeah. Not that, like, I don't love it now. No, I know. But, like, there were, t- like, I'd say in high school, one of the years in high school, either freshman or sophomore year, after I'd do my homework at night, I would sit in my bed and just scroll through Instagram until I went to bed. And that's For not like good. three, four <laughs> nights a week. Yeah. And, like, I felt horrible. Yeah. I woke up in a daze. You know, like it, nothing felt as enjoyable anymore. Yeah. So, you know, and that's the other thing. It's like when we grew up, I feel like we had a bunch of different TV shows that we were watching. You know, it wasn't anything on our phones. Like you said, like I was also a kid who I got my first phone. I think I was like 11. It was fifth, middle of fifth grade. So I just turned 11. All I had on my phone was like messages and games, you know, like I wasn't allowed to have social media. And back then I hated it. I was like, are you serious? All my friends have it. Why can't I have it? And then looking back now, you know, it's another thing, like you said, I couldn't be happier. I'm so happy I didn't have social media. I was able to grow up and, you know, my mom's still the same way with my little sister. Both my parents, they're like, no social media, you know, and She's not a kid who's glued to all of her devices. She leaves her phone home. I never see her on her phone, which is so rare for somebody in their, that age group. So it's it's nice to see where there, there still are some kids that are like that. Yeah, and I think it'll make a little bit of a comeback, too. Because yes. the other thing about it, in order to access it, all these devices are so expensive now, yeah. too. Yep. You know, and they're only going to get more expensive. Yeah. So, <laughs> But yeah, you know. so it's... And not not that it's bad that all these kids are on it, but I think it's definitely affecting them negatively. I think it's bad. Yeah. I think, like, personally, you shouldn't be able to, as a kid, be able to connect with millions and millions of people. Like, you, f- I, I couldn't fathom that yeah. at that age. You know what I mean? Like, to me, old at that age was, like, 20. Yeah, you I know? know. And now that I'm 20, like, it's not. Not. It's you not. Know? Yeah. And, like, it's, even I had it a little too early. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's just my opinion. Yeah, and I, I frankly but, agree, you know, and there's going to be people who definitely disagree, but I think these kids are learning so much that they shouldn't be learning, especially at that young of an age. And some things are too accessible on the internet, and yeah. I'll leave it at that, but yeah, certain things are not, like, kids shouldn't the internet's be way it. too vast, and yeah. these kids should not have free reign of that. Yeah, and they do, and that's the issue. You know, it's like these kids are growing up so much quicker than they should, right? These 10-year-olds are acting like they're 15 yeah, um, yeah. because they're seeing all of these things that 15-year-olds are seeing, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's it's good and bad, and this is, these I are some like people bad. people celebrate that, though. Yes, yeah, and that's a, a problem. A little too much. Yeah. Get into like, that. How do you feel about that, and what do you think is being celebrated? Like, acting older. Like, that gets celebrated. Oh, he's 12, but he acts like he's 18. Yeah. Let him be a kid, bro. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, you're 100% right. Like, if there was one thing I could do at 20, it would be go back <laughs> and, like, enjoy those last... Co- like, not worry about what happens yeah. when I turn 18 again. You know what I mean? Yep. And that's the thing, like... You know, looking back at that also, we always used to want to grow up. You know, at least me. I don't know if you were the same way. Yeah, I want to be 18. I want to be... Like you said... Life comes at you fast. Yes, it does. It does. So, like you said, let those kids be kids. Don't force anything. And, you know, I personally won't be giving my kids social media until I feel like they're an adult. Personally, I won't have a TV in the house until they're like So you're the extreme. That's nice. I don't think I'll be able to do I that. I just don't I want them to grow up without it. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And you can at any point go back and watch those movies and watch that those TV shows. Like they're always going to be out there 
as a kid, you should be able to experience waking up, going outside, going to knock on your friend's door, playing with your friends, going to hang out with your family, not sitting, you know, and it's okay to do this, but like not sitting every weekend around the TV in the living room on the couch on your phones, not doing anything. Yeah. Like to me, that's not enjoyable. That's not what I want my family to be. Yeah. And I completely respect that. And I, I feel very similar. You know, I, I think I, I just don't want my kids to have to go through what our generation went through. I feel like, and look, like I've said, there's so many positives to social media, but it also, it does hurt your mental health in so many ways. And it, it, there's a lot of negatives to it. I think that's where self-awareness comes in though. Yes. Like you have to know when it's affecting you and like when to put it down, when to stop scrolling, you know, delete it for a couple of days, you know, isolation. I feel like social media is a very easy way to isolate yourself and kind of push away the real world and kind of avoid everything and stay in this dark hole. Is that something you've experienced? Is that part of the reason why you deleted social media? Yeah. Okay. It's like you dictate the extent of the relationships you have. And if you're struggling isolating and doing that it's like not it's not good yeah. you know because then you damage those relationships and social media gives you like a false sense of reality yeah you know and then you avoid all those problems that yes. you have in the real life yeah you know yep and how would you say social media affects your social battery and when i say social battery i mean you know going out and having to put on this smile and making right. sure yeah right like it's draining and, and I feel like we always make sure, oh, just in case this person's posting, I want to make sure, you know, I, I look good. And it's like, it's draining. It's yeah. totally draining. And people have seemed to forgotten how to live in the moment and really appreciate everything that's around them and everything that's going on. I feel like we're very quick to make sure, oh, we get a picture of this. And it's just, we're not living in the moment. And I feel like that really does drain all of us. I feel I'm burnt out a lot more than I feel like I should be, but that has to not maybe directly with social media, but it's definitely to do with my social battery and it's drained a lot. How's your social battery? Is that something that has improved? I would say mine definitely has improved. I've kind of focused on more important things, not things that are superficial. That's yeah. how I've improved mine. I think social media, I mean, social media fits in right there with what you said about superficial and not, but by like taking it out of my life, I've been able to focus on myself when I'm by myself and that gives me the ability to focus on other people when I'm with them you okay. know, and like build those relationships, enjoy my, enjoy time with my friends more and not worry about what I have to do next because I spent all my time scrolling through Instagram. Okay. You know? And... What is your favorite part about social media? Makes time go by. Okay. So you use it as more of like a distraction. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I'm going to fill the moment, I like Twitter personally. Like that's my app. If I had to pick one, I'd rather read it than like look at it, I guess. But like even then, like you can get stuck reading over and over. Like there's always more out there, you know? And what's your least favorite platform? TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little corny sometimes. <laughs> I get it. And do you think our what lives... You what are you, what's um, your favorite? What's your least favorite? My favorite... I would say I'm definitely on TikTok the most. My least favorite, which is so funny, is probably Twitter just because <laughs> I don't use it a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's boring unless you like are... Yeah, honestly, it's boring as hell sometimes. It's so funny though. Yeah. Like... It's just, it's so, it's gratifying to scroll yeah. through. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you're doing something. I you're never not. got into Twitter, so that's that's probably why. I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> and do you think our lives would be better if social media never existed? I'm saying from the birth of it to now, you know, not if it just stopped existing now and we kind of understood it, but as a if whole, it never, it existed. never existed. No. Yeah. Okay. I think it's been very beneficial. I think it's outweighed the negatives, mm -hmm. um, but the negatives will soon outweigh the positives. If people don't kind of like, to me, take their humanity back a little bit. You know what I mean? Like everything, everyone's too wrapped up in this 
fake world almost you know like this metaverse or whatever yeah you know what i mean whatever you want to call it whatever this thing does you know the people you talk to or don't talk to you know once once people detach their value from that i think we'll it'll have a lot more positives than, than negatives okay and would you say when you you're scrolling do you notice yourself becoming more anxious more depressed more you know, stressed out like angry yeah. Okay. That was that's mine. Okay. Cause like I, I, I won't want to eat because I'm already doing something. I don't want to get up and do something that's going to take effort. You know, throughout like during the day at least, and then it puts me in a bad mood when you don't eat. You know, and then it's just like a trickle effect all yeah, the way down. Definitely, I would say it's definitely stress. I think that's the right word: anxious and stressful when you're scrolling. Because in my head. I'm like, I could be doing so many other things, but instead I'm wasting time right now. It's almost like it satisfies a part of your brain, but like there's another part that's like, it doesn't, it's not occupied. Like yeah. it's, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel. And I feel the the same way. Use social media to help you. You know, if you, if you see that it's hurting you and affecting you in a negative way, make sure you try and avoid those things or just get rid of them completely. Uh, I would say your best bet is to either delete it or unfollow those that are making you feel this way. For, you know, things like FOMO and not getting invited and seeing your friends places that you weren't invited, you know, try and find different people and, you know, realize that doesn't determine your worth or your value because these people are rude or inconsiderate. Don't let that affect you. And, you know, lastly, use it for a positive platform you know if you're someone who does use it in a negative light don't do that right don't be those people that are going to put other people down you know just to make yourself feel better and yeah other than that I, that is it and you know just make sure that you're using this for good instead of bad thank you guys so much for listening and don't forget to check out dark angel company on instagram at dark angel co and online at darkangelco.com if you're interested in supporting and spreading awareness towards bringing light to a dark topic together, then tune in next time.